Hey, lovely viewers welcome to my channel Pastime Shows. In a whirlwind of secrets and shocking revelations, Days of Our Lives delivered a must-see October 21st episode. Abigail drops a bombshell about her true identity to both Chad and her mother, leaving everyone in disbelief. Meanwhile, Chad is hell-bent on revenge after Kat's shocking confession, vowing to make her pay. And just when you think the drama couldn't escalate further, Kristen stuns Xander with a shocking new demand, offering a mysterious serum, for a steep price. What will happen next? You won't want to miss a second of this drama-packed episode. Abigail tells Chad and her mother who she really is, also, Kristen charges Xander for the serum. Steve tells Chad and JJ the truth about Abigail, today on Days of Our Lives, Sarah tells Brady, and Marlena and Kayla catch up. Mark is about to shoot Chad in Paris when Steve knocks him down. When Chad inquires about the situation, Steve responds, this woman is not Abigail. He labels her a fraud and discloses that Kayla retook the DNA test, proving that this woman is not his wife. Steve informs Chad that Mark fabricated the DNA findings when Abigail inquires about her brother's health. Chad asks Abby if she believes this, but he can tell by her expression that she does. She sobs because she isn't Abigail. Chad finds it hard to accept that Abigail is actually deceased. He inquires as to whether Mark is the woman's boyfriend. He is her brother, she explains. Chad is in search of answers, but Steve believes it's time to call the police. After dragging her into a different room, Chad demands at her to begin speaking. Why is she posing as his deceased wife, he asks. She wants him to understand that Clyde came up with this strategy, not her. Chad queries Clyde's motivation. She sobs for reasons she doesn't know and believes he wanted to torture him in addition to getting his money. Chad exclaims that she doesn't even care about him and is shocked that she feigned death for financial gain. She sobs that she truly does have feelings for him, even if she doesn't think he will believe her. Although Chad doesn't think so, she maintains that she loves him and that her intentions weren't malevolent. She detested lying to him, and as she started to fall for him, it became harder and harder. It's true, but she knows he doesn't need to hear it. How did she know his and Abby's wedding vows, Chad asks. She acknowledges that she discovered Abigail's vows written down in a box of memorabilia in the attic. For making him feel this way, he accuses her of being twisted and screwed up. He screams that if she truly loved for him, she would have told him the truth before her brother came to murder him and before he believed he had his true love back. She stood in front of Mark to stop him, not realizing he was coming to kill him. It was just a matter of her marrying him and giving Clyde his money. When Chad learned that his assets were gone, he asked how she planned to explain. She acknowledges that her disappearance was intended. He believes that either Clyde or her brother decided that it would be simpler for her if he died. She claims she was unaware of that aspect of the scheme. Chad acknowledges that he had a gut feeling that something wasn't right and believes he trusted her because he so much wanted this to be true. He hoped Abigail had returned to him and his children. He was pain-free for the first time since Abby's passing. He has to grieve her once more now. He claims that Abigail's parents will burn in hell when they learn. He is grateful that he kept her a secret from his children. The woman says that this is the reason she wanted them to visit Paris and why she didn't want to see them. She claims that Clyde made her and Mark do this even though they didn't want to. She explains that Clyde threatened to kill their mother if they didn't comply with his demands. She claims that she has been held captive by his men and that she will be put to death if they are unable to get Clyde the money. How do you know it's not just another lie? Chad wonders. I don't expect him to believe me, she tells him. He claims he has no idea who she is. She explains to him that she was named after her mother and goes by Kat, which is short for Katrina. 
Chad is aware that she and her brother perpetrated a vicious deception against everyone who has ever loved Abby, even though he is unsure if she is telling the truth and doesn't care. He vows that he will hold her accountable. Steve restrains a still unconscious Mark in a chair back in the other room. When JJ gets there, he asks his uncle Steve why he is here and what is going on with this Salem doctor. Steve claims that this man, who is the woman's brother and is posing as Abigail, attempted to kill Chad. JJ fears having to tell his dad the truth, even though he knows his mother was correct all along. Before calling Jack, Steve believes they should find out more information. Steve thinks Clyde Weston is connected in some way. When Mark eventually comes to, Steve informs him that they are aware of the truth. As they talk, his sister is working things out with Chad. Kristen is speaking with Mr. Shin over the phone at the D. Mara mansion regarding Abigail's resurrection, and he and the board have given her a lot to consider. After hanging up, she enters the living room, where Xander is waiting. She informs him that she didn't anticipate him and that she won't give him the serum while Brady is incarcerated. Xander tells her that his mother, the true criminal, has been taken into custody and that Brady is now free. He explains what transpired and expresses surprise that she hasn't read about it in the paper. I just returned from a board meeting in Chicago, she says. Xander informs her that he and Sarah persuaded her brother to release Brady even though he didn't want to. He requests the serum, but Kristen must first make sure. She claims that she should be able to call Brady if he is available. After being released, Brady finds Sarah waiting for him at the Salem Police Department. She has something to say to him, but she is happy that he is free and that the correct person is in prison. Brady receives a call from Kristen as they arrive at the meeting room. He accepts it and affirms that he will be leaving and returning home shortly. She invites him to visit Rachel. She also wants to know how he was released. Brady and Sarah discuss after the call. For months, Sarah blamed him for her injury, which makes her feel awful. Brady claims that because of Fiona, he believed he was also culpable. Sarah claims that she was the one who told the police about him and that she would understand if he never forgave her. Brady forgives her, but he must also forgive himself for allowing Fiona to frame him by being weak and relapsing. Give himself credit because Sarah believes he's a good man and had the wisdom to not drive that night. He declines and queries Sarah about why she chose him to be the driver. Was she perplexed? Sarah acknowledges lying. Brady is shocked that she would lie to get him to pay, even though he knows she wanted him to. Sarah assures him she didn't tell a lie to get even with him. After some time to reflect, he believes she was attempting to keep Xander safe and prevent him from killing him. He recounts what happened the night he was taken into custody and concludes she told the police a falsehood to prevent Xander from killing. When Sarah suppresses her emotions, Brady tells her that she doesn't need to speak since he knows she's correct. He doesn't blame Xander for seeking retribution, and she believed it was preferable for a guilty guy to be imprisoned rather than the father of her kid. She gives him thanks. He is aware that she made an effort to change her comments and do the right thing. Sarah claims to have done so, but she also acknowledges that she did so in part because they were promised an experimental serum that could help her walk again in exchange for her and Xander dropping the charges against him. Brady knows who made this offer to them. When they return to the estate, Kristen informs Xander that Brady has been released after speaking with her. But she found out that neither Eric nor Sarah took any action to assist Brady after he realized that he was innocent. She declares that she will keep the serum. She is reminded by Xander that he and Sarah persuaded EJ to let Brady go. According to Kristen, he would finally have had to drop the charges. Thankfully, she informs him that she is feeling giving and will give him the serum in exchange for something. Titan is what she desires. Xander claims that she cannot expect him to give her a billion-dollar business, 
and she already has her own, so why would she want his? In order to become invincible, Kristen intends to combine Titan and Demera. She explains that the Demera board is losing faith in her since they are unhappy with the revenue stream and expectations. She claims that she would win back Titan's faith and become the most prosperous CEO Demera has ever had. She is told by Xander that he will not allow her to spend time with his father. Xander claims that since she has the serum to create a fortune, she doesn't need Titan. According to Kristen, it will take years to get the serum on the market, and one of her brothers may take over the business before then. He still won't let his biggest enemy's daughter to run his father's business. It's a small price to help Sarah, she says. Brady later visits while Kristen is at work. She is overjoyed to see him and leaps into his arms. Brady asks whether she will still give her the serum after telling her that Sarah told him about the agreement they made. According to Kristen, she is, and she has made plans with Xander. Xander brings Sarah home. She claims that after speaking with Brady, he understood her deception and is forgiving her. She inquires about Kristen's experience. Kristen would provide them with the serum, according to Xander, but she demands his family's legacy in exchange. Marlena talks to Kayla at the hospital and informs her that Brady is being released from prison. Despite being preoccupied on her phone, Kayla is pleased for her. She clarifies that she is waiting to hear from Steve, who is in Paris attempting to prevent Chad from marrying Abigail, who is actually not Abigail. Kayla updates her on Mark's and the DNA testing most recent findings. Brady comes up again, and Marlena is relieved that he's not involved with Kristen, who is still attempting to win him back. Kayla believes John is ecstatic, and Marlena agrees. According to her, John always thought there was more to what transpired. He's at an ancient family farm with his dad, and he wishes he could be here. They go back to the woman who is pretending to be Abigail. Kayla hopes Steve will ask her some questions because they remember John and Steve finding her. Marlena thinks it's all very odd that John wakes up prisoner in Poplar Bluff after spending one moment in Italy placing flowers on Katharina's tomb. Kayla is aware that John never found the necessary closure with Katharina. He can't forgive himself for taking a life, according to Marlena. Kayla finds it depressing, and Marlena believes John will always be troubled by Katharina's passing. On Days of Our Lives, Johnny deceives Chanel when Nancy and Joy Wesley return to Salem. Days of Our Lives Monday, October 21st Recap Chad vows payback after Kat confesses, Kristen's new demand stuns Xander. According to Monday, October 21st Spoilers for Days of Our Lives, Steve Johnson claimed that the doctor had changed the DNA findings after knocking out Mark Green. Abigail DeMera, also known as Cat Green, acknowledged that Mark was her brother and that she was not the late wife of Chad DeMera. Fake Abby claimed that Clyde Weston was responsible for the plot and reassured Chad that she had fallen in love with him when they were alone. Fake Abigail said she was unaware that Clyde had given Mark the order to kill him after providing information about Clyde's intentions and how she had tricked Chad. And regretful false Abby maintained that Clyde exploited her hostage mother as leverage and threatened her life, while Chad raged about having to grieve Abigail again. At this point, Chad didn't even know who this woman was and was dubious of anything that came out of fake Abby's mouth. She disclosed that she went by Cat which was an abbreviation for Katharina, a name she and her mother both shared. Chad promised to hold Kat accountable because he was still furious about her deceit. Steve then fetched some rope and tied up an unconscious Mark in the Monday's Days episode. In the end, J.J. Devereaux came back and learned how Mark had pursued Chad previously. J.J. also found out that Mark was involved in the Abigail scam which confirmed that his sister wasn't actually returned after her death. Steve told Mark the truth when he regained consciousness. On the Monday's Days program, Kayla Johnson and Marlena Evans had a catch-up meeting at the hospital. 
Kayla and Marlena talked about all the fake Abigail turmoil and Brady Black's release. The strangeness of John Black's abduction from Katharina Meliuni's burial and subsequent arrival in Poplar Bluff were also discussed. Since Brady was free, Xander Kiriakis pressured Kristen DeMera to give the serum to Sarah Kiriakis at the DeMera estate during Monday's Days of Our Lives broadcast. Fiona Cook refused to give up the paralysis cure, so Kristen called Brady to make sure he was off the hook now that she was in custody. Since he assisted Sarah in her campaign for Brady's freedom, Xander objected, but Kristen pretended that Eric Brady should have received the recognition. But if Xander handed her Titan, Kristen was ready to give up the serum. Despite Xander's complaints, Kristen refused to back down and pretended that Xander would find it worthwhile if Sarah was able to walk once more. Brady forgiven Sarah after she apologized for making the false statement that led to his incarceration. After learning about the serum Kristen was selling, Brady deduced that Sarah had done it to shield him from Xander's lethal retaliation. Brady later traveled to the DeMera estate and pondered whether Kristen would be the one to cure Sarah. Kristen was confident that the arrangement she had suggested to Xander would be successful. On the Monday's Days episode, Xander confessed to Sarah that Kristen had demanded his family's heritage in return for the serum. Stay tuned for more Titan predictions and updates on all the amazing news to follow, as spoilers for Days of Our Lives indicate that some hiccups will prevent Kristen's ambitious plans from succeeding. Days of Our Lives, October 21, Chad promises to make Cat pay. Hopefully, Chad's pledge indicates that he will also be caring for Clyde Weston. Finally, the days of fake Abigail were over. It appears like the next phase of this drama will put Chad back in dark mode. Chad did, after all, pledge retribution in the Days of Our Lives episode that aired on October 21. Thus, it will be necessary for Cat, Mark, and hopefully Clyde Weston to keep an eye on themselves. Farewell, fake Abigail. What I do know is that you and your brother deceived everyone who has ever loved Abby in a very terrible way. And I will hold you accountable for it. Fake Abigail and Chad had some work to do. Chad clarified why he seemed to fall for her charade completely. He wanted it to be true, of course. In addition, he couldn't stop thinking about the DNA test that definitively identified her as Abby. His thoughts kept returning to that, even when something felt strange. She tried to convince him that she didn't come up with the idea for this deception. She actually didn't want anything to do with it. However, she did experience genuine affections for him during this period. He was such a wonderful man in every aspect that she was unable to stop it. Chad, however, took little interest in her alleged affections. There were good reasons he didn't believe anything she said. Chapter on Payback How is Chad going to make sure that Mark and Kat cover the costs of forcing him to grieve for Abby again? Is he going to switch to full Demera? Will the repayment take place outside of the legal framework? Or will he seek to ensure that Mark and Kat are held criminally accountable for their actions? Retaliating against Clyde and ensuring that he is never again a factor in Salem should be part of this revenge. Despite the fact that Clyde is purportedly holding their mother hostage, perhaps Chad can persuade Kat and Mark to turn on him. Clyde must remain in isolation in prison for the remainder of his life. He must be observed by guards who cannot be bought off or used as leverage. Take him to a black ops location where individuals arrive but never go. Isn't that real? Hi there, Cat Green. Cat may now be Cat, whoever that is, since the fake Abigail identity has been abandoned. Indeed. She is the daughter of Katharina, the woman John is said to have killed and Constantine's daughter. It appears that there was a lot of exaggeration surrounding her death. And how will this Katharina story unfold now that Constantine is dead and John is traveling to Baton Rouge with his father? How are they going to connect Katharina and Kat to the events in Salem? 
Finding out more about Kat's family history and identity should be a priority. In a recent interview with TV Insider, Anna Lynn McCord discussed how she created Kat from the ground up. You get to really experience Kat, her dynamic with her family, and what her siblings mean to her. She added that this character can perhaps bring a little lightness and joy since she gets to use humor as her outlet. Doing that gave her greater flexibility. How do you believe Chad will be compensated now that fake Abigail is over? Will he be able to set aside his affections for Kat and exact appropriate retribution? Regarding other news, how did you feel about Brady pardoning Sarah and Kristen for altering the quid pro quo? Tell us in the comments section. For more of the latest updates and behind-the-scenes secrets from Days of Our Lives, make sure to hit subscribe and ring that bell. Stay in the know with every new release.